Okay, for this fly, I'm going to tie a, uh, a comparadon fly, and, uh, and this one's going to be tied in in olive color, trying to imitate some of those uh, those drakes, those green drakes and stuff that you start to see in the summertime. So we're going to tie that in in a comparadon style, and uh, the hook that I'm using today is a size 16. Nope, oh, it's a size 14, 2x long dry fly hook. So a little bit larger fly, and uh, I'm going to tie a little, little compare down here. Here we go. All right, to start off with, I'm going to get my thread onto the hook and get a good base going. Leave a little bit of room up there in the front. And to do this, I'm just going to start the fly off with a base on the entire shank of the hook, just like that. All right, once I get that on, the next step is going to be to tie in the tail. Now the tail is going to be just a few, just a, a two micro fibets on each side once we split the tail, as a mayfly has a split tail. But in order to do that, you might notice I have just a tiny little clump of dubbing here that I'm going to just place on my thread, twist it on, run it down right to, I might have a little more than I wanted. So I might tighten it up a little. I'm going to take that little tiny piece of dubbing and I'm just going to place it right down and wrap it right at the back end of this fly. Now the reason for that little piece of dubbing is it's going to help me when I use these micro fibbets and tie my tail in. So I've got four fibers here. I'm going to tie these four fibers in and I'm going to split these fibers into so there's two on each side. Some people like to just do one. Sometimes I think that that's not quite enough for the fish to really be able to visualize. So I like to go two on each side. I'm going to lay those fibers on there. They're hard to see, I know. And once they're on about the right spot, about the length of the shank, I'm going to take my thread and I'm just going to Fasten them right on the top of the hook and I'll tie back somewhat tight wraps and just do that a little bit onto that dubbing. What that does is that tightens, fastens that dubbing a little bit. You'll notice I'm grabbing two fibers on each and I'm pulling them to each side. Once I get them to each side, then I'm going to wrap, make a wrap behind one side, wrap around the shank and make a wrap behind the other side once around the shank and what that does is that splits those fibers and that little tiny piece of dubbing actually helps it hold in place so you may be able to see those those hairs that have been split now and that was my goal there and that little piece of dubbing you'd be amazed at how helpful that is to do that okay now that I've got my fibers or my tails tied in. I'm going to wrap up here to the front where we will be tying on our wings for the comparadon. So I'm going to use some deer hair here and I'm just going to get a nice clump of deer hair being this is a size 14 I'm going to actually get a pretty good size clump uh, a lot of times you hear people say a pencil sized clump. That's probably what I'm getting for this. Okay, once I get that, then of course I got to get that. You like to pull the, pull the fuzzy fibers out of there that don't belong, that are just going to cause you problems when you're tying. Try to get as many of those out as you can. I'm going to put it in the hair stacker and stack it. Okay, looks pretty even. Get a good pinch on it. Now instead of tying the deer hair fibers this way, we're going to turn that elk hair, or deer hair, I keep saying elk hair because that's what I'm accustomed to tying with. And we're actually going to lay that deer hair on and measure it. Make sure your pinch is about the same length as the shank of the hook. 
Then we're going to pinch that and tie that up front. Notice my first wrap is, is loose. Second wrap is loose until I get all the way around the second time, then I pull tight. You can see those fibers really starting to flare. That's what we want there. Okay, once I get that, then I'm going to make a number of tight wraps working back on the hook to try to fasten that deer hair to the shank. Sometimes that deer hair has a tendency to want to twist on you. But if we get a number of good wraps here, we won't have to worry about it trying to uh, wrap. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to try to bunch up this handful of deer hair, and we're going to snip it. Make sure I'm not getting my uh, my tail fibers. And I'll we'll have to clean that up a little bit. Keep the good deer hair fibers forward. And I'm going to just keep working my thread back, trying to fasten that deer hair down. So I'm just going to keep, keep working it. And when you start doing this, you'll notice it seems like you're not gathering all of the deer hair. And that's true, and it'll take a couple of times. Um, but you'll want to get all that gathered nicely so that it uh, provides a good taper for your fly. And so it helps, it just adds to helping fasten that, that uh, deer hair to your hook and preventing it from trying to spin on you. There we go, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna clean it up just a touch here. Okay, now I'm going to come back to the very back of the fly. And a person, you can use dubbing for the body of this fly. You can use thread for the body of this fly. I've used a number of things. But what I'm going to do today is we're actually going to use a piece of this turkey wing that's been dyed uh, a light olive color and I just take one fiber off of that turkey wing and we're going to tie that one fiber on the tip sometimes you gotta be careful when you do this because sometimes that tip is a little bit delicate and it'll break so I like to go a little ways up the tip tie it in and then I'll just wrap the rest of that in, just like that. All right, now I've got to wrap this turkey quill up towards the front of the fly, and that can often become challenging with that deer hair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a quick half hitch with my thread. I'm gonna do two of them just to be safe. And then I'm going to snip my thread. Of course, we'll put it on here in a second, but now I like to use these uh, hackle pliers. And I'll tie these hackle pliers, I'll put these hackle pliers right on the back end of that turkey quill. Just like this. And I like to just put my finger right through the hole on that turkey, on that, on those hackle pliers. That way I can just wrap. And you want to go loose, like I said, this. I need to get some deer hair out of the way. What I like about doing this, it provides a really nice segmented body all the way up along the fly there. You'll notice as I bring it forward. Just looks really nice. Really gives it that nice mayfly -y look. Okay, once I get up to the front, now I'm going to put my thread back on this fly. And you can do that without taking your thread off if you don't feel comfortable doing that. 
I would prefer to do it because it just makes it easier for me to tie the fly. Get our thread back in onto the fly, snip it, and then I'm going to bring it to the behind the deer hair. And we will tie that turkey off. There we go. I'm going to want to get quite a few wraps in the back here just to make sure it's tied off. I don't want that coming loose on us. Okay. And just to add to the fly, I like to put a little bit of a uh, of dubbing up at the up at the front, just to kind of help cover some of the work that's been done up there. You'll notice there's a little bit of a mess going on up here, so I like to use a little bit of dubbing. Again, if a person doesn't want to use that turkey quill, you know it's it's quicker to do it without. I just prefer the look that I get when I tie it with these. So. Get my dubbing here. Let's put some dubbing on the back of the fly. And then bring that deer hair back. Put some dubbing up here on the front of the fly. Kind of work it back and forth. I have just a little more than I want. Take a little bit off of there. Got my little one back and one forward. And call that good. Okay. Now that I'm at the front of the fly, I'm going to whip finish, and that'll be it. Whip finish right up here at the front. Pull those deer hair fibers back. Let's do two whip finishes for good measure. There we have it. Nice little comparison. Of course, you want that that half circle uh, profile on this fly. Once you get that, again, I like to put a little fly head cement right about there, a little super glue right there at the base of it uh, to make sure that that fly holds its form, that those deer hair fibers hold their form. So there you go. Nice little uh, mayfly pattern comparison.